So in this video, we're going to take you through processing a post-processed kinematic uh, GPS project. So it's a very useful technique, especially in a country like Scotland, where mobile phone coverage is still uh, intermittent in areas. Um, and it enables a user to go to site um, using the VRS uh, license, um, but without an internet connection. So essentially, all what we're doing in the field is logging raw data, and we're going to post-process that when we get back to the office, but we're going to use the VRS data. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import the, the data. So I have two files here. When you're using PPK with Trimble Access, you'll still have a job file, and you'll also have some raw GNSS data, which you can see here is a T02 file, so it's a compressed uh, file. I'll import them one by one. Um, normally, you would import them together, but I'll import them one by one, just highlight a few things. So we drop the job file into TBC. It identifies that there's probably a change in the uh, project type, so we'll just choose that we're going to continue using the project definition here. And you wouldn't have just got the nearest. This is the point here is the nearest physical base station, but there's no vectors forming, so it probably just got us a slight internet connection, but it wasn't enough to actually um, get RTK. So I'm just going to delete these points. So when I import um, the job file, I'm going to end up with whatever points I've recorded. But these don't have vectors associated with them, and they're not high accuracy. They're basically mapping type accuracy um, coordinates, so maybe a few meters. So we can see here that when we click on an individual point, we don't have vectors, and we can see that we don't have any of the associated stats that we'd expect to see when we've got RTK points. If I now go and import the raw data, T02 file, drag and drop it in, then we can see that we have the raw data for the points 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. There were logs for about 20 seconds per point. Um, but the data surrounding it is all useful because that will basically help us to actually get the initialization or essentially it's it's very similar to initialization so what we want to do is we want to take a note of the times here um but we want to take a note of the start and end time for the entire segment so we can see the start time here is 11:57 and the end time is actually 12:20 so we can now just close this dialog box. So because we've not been able to access the VRS live on site, we've had no internet connection, then essentially what we need to do is we have the option to record that raw data in the field and then post process against a virtual um, reference station. So to get that reference station data, when we've got a VRS license, then we can log into the virtual um, Rhinex store. So the web address is just vrsnow.de. You're going to use your normal VRS uh, log login. And we can see here that we can go to the reference stations shop and actually generate a new order. And what we can do is we can use this to generate, um, to download data from base stations which we could get through the ordnance survey in this country as well, or we can actually generate a virtual rec uh, Rhinex station. And this allows us to maintain the short baseline so our occupation times can be much shorter um, for post-processing than they would be if we were using, um, if we were using um, the ordnance survey stations themselves. So here what I need is I need to nominate a latitude and longitude for the job and what we can do here is i just go into the project here and if i just uh, split my screen a little bit so i can see them both and let's just pull that back a little bit so what we can do here is i can Go into one of these points and I can see the latitude is 57, 12, 57 degrees, 12 minutes, 8 seconds. 
So I can just type that in here, 57, 12, um, and then 08. And I'll put in the first of the figure after the decimal points. And then the next point is 4, um, 43, 15. I can also use the map underneath to drag the, the position here to where I want it to be. But normally you're going to use the data from TBC. And I don't want it to be exactly in one of these points. So I'm just, that's why I round it to one decimal place. So it's not going to land exactly on top of one of these points. So we've got the north, that's a westing. And then we can see here it's 152 for my spheroid height, not the um not the geoid height, but I use this figure for the spheroid height. So that's the location I want to generate this virtual reference station. And then we can we need a time. And the time I'm actually going to take from this file here, the raw data, which we already confirmed is basically being 22 minutes from the 24th. Um of April. Now, one setting to be aware of is that we need the time system here in GPS. So in TBC, what we need to make sure is that under the units and GPS time, a lot of the time it will default to local. Just so we get the times to match up, um, then we basically need to make sure that that's set as it should be. So we're going to start the data from 11.57. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take 24 minutes and we're going to take one second data. I'm going to choose to add that to the order. So it's just going to. And then it's confirming that uh, there's going to be 1,440 epochs. And then we can next to that. And then we're going to use T02 data. So obviously Rhinex data is what a lot of people would be used to using for base stations. There's a couple of um, important arguments for using T02. The first of all, it tends to be uh, more highly compressed, so it's smaller data. The second one we'll come to in a second. So we'll generate the data. And I'll pause the video here because it's going to take a minute or two to generate this data. So that's taken about two or three minutes to generate that data. Um, we can see the data is finished. And then we can see that all of the data has been available. If, uh, if it's not been available, then we'll get some uh, mismatches between what's required and what's available here. And I can just choose to download the data. So I'm just going to tap download. I'm going to save this as a zip file, which is going to contain um, it's going to contain the T02 file and then just a text file which tells us the details of the job. So what now that that's downloaded, we're finished with the, the VRS now store. Um, there's no charge, obviously, additional charge that's included in your, your license. And what we'll see here is we now have this zipped file with the VRS station in it. And now I just drag and drop that data into Trimble Business Center. And we can see it's going to call it uh, B666. Um, we can see it's 24 minutes. The times are matching. The antenna, all of the Ordnance Survey antennas um, are Leica. So they kept the antennas from the previous uh, upgrade at the last major upgrade. And then we can see that uh, all of the vast majority of the base stations are now Trimble Alloys. Um, that's what's been used by the Ordnance Survey. So we're obviously calculating a virtual Rhinex uh, station, a virtual reference point, um, rather. Um, but the data is the data is going to simulate um, what the nearest physical reference station is. So that's going to be a Trimble alloy. I get this error just saying that it doesn't read the text file. That's fine. Uh, there's inside the zip is a T02 in the text file. So we see here that the T02 from the reference station is now being imported. What we now will automatically get is, first of all, one of the second reason for using the T02 file is it automatically comes across as a as a as a, um, a control quality point. So it's one less thing that we need to do. So we can see that this reference station with nice round numbers comes in as a as a reference uh, station. So we don't need to fix it. 
and then we'll see that these baselines are available. They're now showing as baselines. So they're unprocessed baselines. So we can see how many satellites are being tracked, but they're baselines rather than vectors. So now we simply go across the survey, process baselines, and it will now process the points. And if you're sharp eyed, you probably see the position of these points jump a little bit when we hit save. So just keep an eye out for that. And we can see here the solutions that we've achieved and they're typical sort of RTK level solutions, but we're just doing it um, afterwards. The, the field procedure we're not gonna cover in this video. This, is, this video is covering the, the office procedure for processing the data, the, the data. So QC this, all looks fine. We hit save, watch for the points jumping a little bit. You saw the points jumping and that's because the initial position is just a, a mapping grade type accuracy, maybe to the nearest meter or two. And now what we have is we've got vector solutions. Um, so we can see here, again, we're seeing now fixed solutions. The field method shows us stop and go and our accuracies are visible. So that's a quick video on how to process PPK, post-process kinematic data inside TBC using uh, VRS data um, generated from the VRS Now store.